Good morning everyone. So we'll be discussing today um, regarding handling and processing of blood specimens for laboratory testing. So class, this will be the first topic included for your finals. So let's start. So what are the steps involved in processing and handling different types of specimens? So According to your book, 46 to 68% of laboratory or errors occur in the pre-analytical phase. So sa lab natin, meron tatlong phase yun. We have the pre-analytical, analytical, and post-analytical. Pag sinabing pre-analytical, nandun class yung patient identification, blood collection, at saka yung mga choice of tubes. So, the phlebotomy is responsible to follow all the appropriate steps required for each test that they are scheduled to perform. So, what are the roles of the phlebotomies in the routine handling? First, the phlebotomies have the knowledge and skills to perform routine venipuncture. He or she should be careful in, mi in mixing tubes and preparing specimens for transport to the laboratory. Adhere to time limits set for the delivery of specimen to the laboratory. Di ba class, nakadiscuss natin before na kada tube, iba't iba yung required na uh, mixing or required na mixing of tubes. Nakadepende kung ano yung um, additive or anticoagulant present dun sa tube na yun. So ito nga, na-discuss na natin to before, na pag red glass, walang inversions yun. Pag light blue, 3 to 4 times yung inversion. Red na plastic, yung red na plastic class, yun yung may clot activator. Isama na din natin ang gold or tiger top, 5 times yung inversion. Tapos light green, green, lavender, pink, gray, tan, yellow, orange, and royal blue. Lahat sila ay 8 times yung inversion. For transporting specimens naman, syempre handling specimens for transport should be done properly to avoid hemolysis, platelet activation, coagulation, and even breakage of glass tubes. So the specimen should be transported with stopper. Ano yung stopper na yan? Ito. Yung mga kulay red na yan. Nakadepende pa din kung anong kulay ng tube. To avoid conduct to the content, minimize agitation of the specimen, and aid in clot formation. Kaya class, sa tackle box nyo, dapat meron kayong lagayan mismo ng mga tubes. Dapat nakatayo at hindi nakahiga. So, special care is needed when handling blood specimen to protect its condition and quality. Mahalaga yung body temperature. Yung iba, kailangan naka-chilled or naka chill yung specimen. Tapos yung iba din ay light sensitive. So, anong gagawin natin pag ganyan? First, body temperature. The specimen should be transported below body temperature to prevent ano yun, precipitation or agglutination. So, anong gagawin dun sa mga specimens sa ganon? Um, the tube should be pre-warmed at 37 degrees Celsius. Pwede din yung mga portable heat blocks. At pwede din mga heel warmers. So, class nandito, ano yung mga examples? We have cold agglutinin, cryofibrinogen, and cryoglobulins. Class kasi, may mga tao kasi na mayroong mga sakit na ganyan, yung mga cold, uh, cold agglutinin disease. Um, once na hindi mo pre-warm yung tube na paglalagyan ng blood, ganyan yung mangyayari. Para siyang merong mga parang maliliit na coagulation na nangyayari. So, dapat ang ginagawa, ipre-warm muna yung mismong tube na paglalagyan ng specimen or ng blood. So, next naman, chilled specimen. Chilling slows the metabolic process which could affect the results for some specimens. So, specimens should be completely submerged in crushed ice and water slurry during transport and immediately tested or refrigerated. So, ano mga examples? You have ACTH, acetone, ACE, ammonia, catecholamines, free, um, fatty acids, gastrins, glucagon, homocysteine, lactic acids, PTH, PH or blood gas, pyruvate, and renin. Ano yung pinaka-common? Itong blood gas. So, um, ulit nga, hindi tayo yung nagko-collect nyan, pero nakikita ko dun sa mga respiratory therapies, meron talaga silang parang nakaready ng 
ay slurry. Kung alam niyo yung parang consistency ng slurpee, parang ganun yung pag niya. Pero dapat hindi pa din direktang nakadikit dun sa yellow yung specimen. So parang ang ginagawa ng iba may nakasapin pang karton before nung specimen. Bakit? Kasi pwede din mag ng hemolysis yung ice or yung lamig galing sa yellow. So exposure, uh, exposure to light it can affect the result of a specimen. So anong ginagawa? Um, the specimen must be wrapped sa aluminum foil, light blocking amber, colored container. So ganyan, ito yung itsura niyan, foil. Pero syempre dito sa Pilipinas, sanda ko nung nag-internship kami, anong ginagamit namin? Carbon paper. Carbon paper lang ang pataklob sa tubes. Anong mga test yung kailangan nun? We have bilirubin, carotene, red cell phosphate, serum folate, vitamin B2, vitamin B6, vitamin B12, vitamin C, urine porphyrins, and urine porphobilinogen. Pinakakomon, bilirubin. Sinong mga common na tinetest ng bilirubin? Yung uh, mga babies, mga newborns. So let's proceed. Blood specimen processing and reasons for specimen rejection. So specimens are transported to the laboratory for screening and prioritizing. So first they are identified, nilalag sila, sinosort by department and evaluated for specimen suitability. So pagdating sa lab, meron tayong tinatawag na recept or reception area or receiving area. So doon, dinodouble check ulit yung identification kung tama ba yung nasa request form at tama ba yung nasa tube. Nilalag siya kung anong oras dumating, kung anong oras kinolect ako at kung anong oras dumating sa lab. Tapos sinosort siya by department. So may tinatawag na floater. Yung floater siya yung magdadala sa um, designated na department kung saan yung test na yun niraran. So, una, the specimen is not identified properly. So, pag hindi nga tama yung nandun sa tube, hindi nagtutugma yung nandun sa tube at nasa requisition form, um, for rejection siya. Bakit? Kasi, um, misidentification will lead to um, um, results na hindi uh, maaring akma dun sa patient. Inadequate volume. So, dapat, Remember to look on the black line when filling the tube, lalo na sa EDTA at sa light blue. Meron yung black. Yung black na yun, ibig sabihin hanggang dun lang kayo pwedeng maglagay ng blood. So sa EDTA, normally 2ml or 3ml. Yun. Tapos, pag hemolysis or hemolysis specimen, normally ang color ng serum or plasma is ganyan, light yellow or yellow. Pero once na nag-red na yan, ibig sabihin, himulays yung blood. Pag nirad mo siya, magiging um, erroneous na yung result, magvavary na yung result. So, dapat um, i-reject din yun. Wrong tube for collection. Tube is outdated, improper handling or mixing, specimen is contaminated, and QNS. So, dapat initingnan nyo din lagi yung expiration date nung specimen ay nung tube pala rather tapos QNS anong ibig sabihin ng QNS quantity not sufficient so ito tingnan nyo to underfilled siya underfilled ito naman overfilled overfilled so pag ganyan reject pa din Collection time is incorrect, specimen is exposed to light, procedure did not follow testing time limits, and there is delay or error in processing. So yun nga, katulad nga sa bilirubin testing, dapat talaga protected siya sa light. Kaya dapat naka carbon, paper, or aluminum foil. So delivery time limits and exceptions for delivery and processing specimens. So, routine blood specimens must be delivered in the laboratory within 45 minutes. Centrifugation must be done within 1 hour. Pero, class, yung cinematology section na EDTA tube, yung lavender top or violet top, hindi siya sinesentrifuge. So, una, yung mga time limit exception, we have stat or emergency specimens. Laging siya yung priority over all other specimens in terms of transportation, processing, and testing. Pero may exceptions. 
Yung blood smear class, ginagawa siya or pinaprepare siya within one hour after the collection. So, kunwari, nag-collect ka ngayon sa EDTA. EDTA tube, yung ginagamit for blood smear. So, within one hour, dapat mm, na nakapag-blood smear na kayo. Tapos, EDTA specimen for CBC can be analyzed within 6 hours and is stable within 24 hours. EDTA specimen for ESR, ano yung ESR? Erythrocyte sedimentation rate. Para saan yun? Um, to test or to diagnose kung merong inflammation yung isang patient. It can be tested for 4 hours kung nasa room temp yung specimen and 12 hours kung nasa ref temp yung specimen. Tapos, EDTA specimen for reticulocyte count. It is stable for 6 hours at room temperature and 72 hours for ref temp. So, ano ginagawa sa reticulocyte count? Um, yung reticulocyte count, um, anong pinagkaiba niya sa blood smearing? Yung sa blood smearing kasi class, ang gagawin niyo is, mag smear muna kayo ng blood bago niyo i-stain. At sa reticulocyte count, class, ang nangyayari is um, i-stain mo muna siya, tapos incubate, tapos saka mo i-smear. Tapos yan yung mga itsura ng mga reticulocyte count sa blood smear. So, glucose test drawn from sodium fluoride. It is stable for 24 hours at room temperature, but stable up to 48 hours pag nasa ref temp siya. Prothrombin time, or yung PT, it is stable for 24 hours. Ang activated partial prothrombin time, prothrombin time is, should be analyzed within 4 hours. Paano yung po tatandaan yan? Yung APTT, ilang letters yun? A, P, P, T. Apat. So, tandaan nyo na dapat within 4 hours, dapat ay na-analyze na or na-test na siya. So, ano yung centrifuge? Centrifugation or the centrifuge is an apparatus that is used to separate cells, plasma, or serum of blood specimen. So, it is achieved by spinning the blood tubes inside the vessel at a high speed that the centrifugal force will cause the separation of specimens. Di pa pag nag-collect tayo, as in pa, whole blood siya, pulang-pula. Pero once na, na centrifuge na yan, maghihiwalay na siya into, depende kung serum or plasma, normally, Serum, pag walang additive yung tube na ginamit nyo, serum. Tapos meron siyang buffy coat. Yung buffy coat na doon yung platelets sa WBCs. Tapos itong po lang to, yun yung mismong um, red blood cells. So, it is important to leave the stopper on the tube before centrifugation. Bakit? To avoid contamination, evaporation, and aerosol formation. Tubes must be balanced. Lagi dapat yung tandaan na balance yan. So, plasma specimen should be centrifuged immediately. Serum needs to be completely clotted prior to centrifugation. Normal clotting is 30 to 60 minutes at room temperature. So, yung serum, di ba ang serum na kukuha sa yung walang additive sa clotted blood. Bakit kailangan mo nang completely clotted bago mo siya centrifuge? Kasi once na hindi siya completely clotted, may tendency na mag-hemolyze yung specimen or yung blood. So, mag-wait kayo ng 30 to 60 minutes bago nyo siya i-centrifuge. Alicoating. Ano yung alicoating or alicote? Alicote of a specimen refers to a portion of the sample specimen for chemical analysis or testing. The preparation is done by transferring a portion of specimen into one or more tubes. So, ano nangyayari lang dyan? Doon sa pinaka-mother tube, yung doon sa pinaka-main tube nyo, kukuha lang kayo ng small sample, tapos ilalagay nyo na sa another tube para yun yung gagamitin nyo for testing. So, ano yung OSHA Act or RA11058 or the required protective equipment worn when processing specimen? So, healthcare institutions should comply with the appropriate protective equipment set by the Occupational Safety and Health Standards. Protective equipment includes gloves, gown, coat, and mask. Kaya dapat lagi pag nasa laboratory kayo, dapat complete lagi yung PPE nyo. Yung iba ay yung mag-PPE, bakit? Kasi mabanas daw, masikip, ganyan. Pero class, Para din yun sa inyo, para sa inyong protection against sa mga pwede nating makuhang diseases or sakit sa laboratory. 
So class, that's the end of the discussion regarding this topic. So hope you understand something. Tapos, um, to follow na lang yung mga ibang videos regarding dun sa mga next topic natin. Thank you and good day.